Hey, this is MJ and in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a granny square stocking using a traditional granny square that's worked in double crochet stitches. I'm gonna be showing you these smaller squares in this tutorial in the color Wren. So this is Brava Tweed that I'm working with and they have tons of beautiful colors. They really extended their line. It started out with just a small collection, but now they have lots of colors to choose from. So I've shown you here with these colors. I also have another stocking I'm working on that has some pinks and some blues and burgundy. So really whatever matches your decor, but just to make things easier for you to see on camera, we're going to work up this stocking. And this stocking has one two three four rounds and i'm going to show you how to make one a little bit smaller by only working three rounds so it's really up to you whether you prefer to have a larger stocking or a smaller stocking i'm using the dots crochet hook for this pattern and i'm using the 5.5 millimeter and they come in a set with sizes two millimeter to six millimeter and i'll have links in the description box for the hooks as well as the yarn so to begin, let's make a magic ring. Wrap the yarn around your index finger three times. Take your hook, sliding it through all three loops. Take your first loop, pull, and we will chain three. And this will count as our first double crochet. Work a double crochet in the ring. work another double crochet so we're going through the ring pulling up a loop yarn over pull through two pull through two now we'll chain one so this is our first cluster of three doubles because our chain three counts as a double we're going to do another cluster of three doubles one two three and chain one one two three chain one and one more time and chain one. So you should have four clusters, one, two, three, four. I like to move my work out of the way. We're going to pull this tight. So as you can see, only one loop is pulling in. Take that loop that's pulled in, give it a tug. It's going to tug in that other loop and then just take your tail and pull. Now we're going to slip stitch over to the chain one space. I'm going to go through that first double crochet, slip stitch, slip stitch in the next and slip stitch to the chain one space. Now I'm going to chain three. The chain three is always counting as a double crochet and we need to make a corner here. So we're going to double crochet two times. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to do another cluster in the same stitch to make a corner. So one, two, three. Now I'm not going to chain one or do any chains between these clusters because I want the stocking to be fairly tight stitched. I don't want too much gapping. So I'm just going to go right over to the next chain one space and work another cluster. So three double crochet. Chain one and three double crochet all in the same space. So this is gonna make our next corner. 
because we're making a square. I'm going to finish doing that all the way around. So another two clusters with a chain one between them in the next chain one space and the final chain one space, and then I'll meet you up. Okay, so now we're just going to slip stitch across. There's no chain one in between. So we're going to slip stitch, slip stitch in the next double crochet and slip stitch into the chain one. Then we're going to chain three. And this is going to be another corner. So in the chain one corners, we need to make our corners, which are three doubles, chain one, three doubles. So that's always in a corner. Chain one and three doubles. Now we need to work a cluster in between these two clusters. There's no chain one, but we will just work into that space between them. So one, two, three. And then we go right over to the next chain one space, which is our corner, and we make another corner. Chain one, and three doubles. So we work this all the way around. And if you were to go to the fourth round, you continue working your corners in the chain one spaces, but then you would have two clusters in these spaces here. But we're only doing three rounds, but this is if you continue with the pattern and go to that next round, that's what you're doing. And if you went for another round, you would then have three clusters between your corners. And each round you increase, you would have more one more cluster between the corners. So let's just work another cluster. Okay, and then you're working another corner in the chain one. So I'm gonna repeat that around. Okay, so once you get all the way around, I like to slip stitch again over to the corner before I fasten off. But just to show you if you are changing colors, I'm just gonna give a quick demonstration before I fasten off. So if you're changing colors each round, this is how I suggest doing it. So I'm gonna slip stitch over to the chain one and put my hook through, but I'm not going to pull up with this color. I'm gonna pull through with the new color. I'm going to make a slip knot just to make it a little bit more secure. And I'm gonna put that on my hook Tightening it, tightening it up and pulling it through. I would then chain three with my new color. And I also just like to crochet over those tails as I continue to work. So what you wanna do after you do your two double crochets is just then crochet over one tail. So I'm gonna chain one Finishing my three clusters. And then what you can do is you have some separation between your two tails. So all you then need to do is knot your tails and trim them because it's the stocking. You really don't need to be concerned about the knots to the inside of your work. So this is just gonna save a ton of weaving. All you're going to do is take these tails, give them a really good knot and trim, and then that's gonna alleviate all those ends to weave when you're changing color. Now, another thing I wanted to show you quickly. So when you're finishing off, you can either come over to the edge, slip stitch into the corner and fasten off, or if you prefer, you can do a seamless join. And 
and I'll show you how to do that. As you finish that last double crochet, we're just going to cut the yarn, pull it through, take your yarn needle, thread your yarn, you're going to find that first double crochet going under both loops. You're going to come back and go through the back loop only of the last double crochet. That's going to make a little faux stitch. Okay, so it will be easy when you're joining to work through this nice clean edge. And you can just weave this tail. Okay, and you've already crocheted over your other tail, so you can just trim these. These little squares I've blocked to three and a quarter inches. So this will be closer to probably about a three inch, and when we blocked them out, they were about three and a quarter. So I'm just grabbing my measuring tape and you can see the blocked ones are three and a quarter and these are measuring just slightly over three inches. So just to get everything squared up and looking nice, we um, have blocked them out to three and a quarter. Okay, so once you get all of your squares blocked and finished, you're going to want to lay them out like this. So I have now if you wanted your stocking to be a little bit taller, my rib band adds, but you could have another row of squares up here, but I have one, two, three, four. So this stocking is going to be two width and then two will go to the back and I've brought them down one, two, three. So if you start out, you have your four by three, then you're going to add another one over here, down like this. These will actually get folded in, but to start out, just lay everything out like this, and then you have two over to this side. So I'll have a picture diagram, all of this stuff on the blog, plus I can pop up another picture for you, but it's looking like I'm getting most of them into the um the frame so now what we're going to do is start crocheting all of these together so you can use really whatever seaming method you prefer i'm doing a really simple seaming method and i like to go with as many get as many squares put together as possible just because it's easier that way so I like to put them right sides facing. So these two are sort of on their own. So I like to kind of maybe go vertically first. So make sure I get these all seamed this way, get these ones seamed, and then you can go the other way to get them all together. So you can go whichever side you prefer. We could start even over here and put these two little guys together or really whatever if let's say we're gonna do let's just move this out of the way let's say we're gonna do this big long section and we're gonna get these stitched up together I would fold them all like this so that my right sides are facing then take your yarn let's get a slip knot put that on the hook and let's get started putting them together. So we're gonna go to our corners. Okay, and we're gonna single crochet. And then what I'm going to do is find the stitches. So here's the first stitch, here's the first stitch. I want, what I'm gonna call here, this is the front loop, and this is the back loop of this square. So we're gonna go through the front loop, 
Then we're going to go through the back loop. And that's going to, as you can see in here, the two loops are going to the inside. It's going to give us a nice edge. So I'm just going to single crochet. I find this method to be really quick to do. There's lots of different ways to join granny squares. So if you have another method you'd prefer, feel free to use it. And if you are doing different colored squares, kind of like I've done here, it's nice to get them all laid out and sort of mixed up your different your different color combinations before you start doing this just to make sure you don't maybe have like two with the same edging together. I just like to mix them all up. And now once we get to the next corner, you're just going to go straight through that corner and single crochet. So now we take our next two squares. Again, they're right sides facing and we're going through the corners and just make sure that you keep everything tight. You don't want them too loose. And then we're doing the same thing. Just continuing to single crochet. I know sometimes it can be where we've slip stitched, you can be a little bit confused as to what loop to go through. Just try to take a look at where the stitch is and you're just wanting that front loop of the stitch and the back loop of the next one. Okay, so I'm going to continue. So I'll go across here, I'll do the next section, and so on. Okay, so once you get all the way across, make sure you don't twist any of these areas here. We're just going to snip that off. Okay, so this is what it's looking like. We should have that nice edge here. And if you want at this point, you could then attach these guys, but just continue in this manner, joining them all up so that it ends up in this pattern. And then once we get that far done, then I'll show you how to assemble the stocking together once we get this much of it done. Okay, so I'm working across them this way now. It makes it a little easier because they're already somewhat attached. So let me work through going this way with you as well. I like to always start off with that slip knot on my hook. And we're going in to this corner and we're going into that corner. So always make sure you get those corners attached and continue. And it should be really easy, except for where there's the slip stitches to see where to put your hook in because you're just grabbing the outer loops. So like I say, when you get to the spot where you have the slip stitches, just make sure you get the back loop of the slip stitch. Just takes a little more fiddling.
and still work through those corners. So when you get to a corner, work through the corner and then go across to the next corner. Even though it's already attached, you want to make sure you get all those corners again and just keep working across. And once I got all the way across here, I fastened off and I'm going to continue finishing up with these. Make sure you're always putting your right sides facing. Okay, so I've finished seaming together all of my squares, so going in both directions. And then what you're going to do is fold it together like this, but we're going to be, when we seam it together, we're going to be folding in the square as well as the square to give us our stocking shape. So it's actually really, really easy to do this. We only need to go in one continuous join, but we want to make sure again that we have our right sides facing. You can see we've got a lot of tails and some of them I just knot because it's all going to be on the inside of the stocking. Once you finish, you can go through and any ones that you can just knot up and trim it will save on some of that weaving time. But as you can see, we're going to start here. This gets folded. We'll seam across all the way down, continue around. Fold this one up, seam, ending here. So basically, starting at the top and continuing, you don't have to fasten off at all. You can finish seaming all of it together. See how cute that looks once you fold that in. So this is going to be a smaller stocking. But again, if you make it with the larger squares, you're going to have a bigger stocking and you could even go bigger by doing an additional round if you wanted. It still just follows the same format. I think the most important thing to remember as you're working around this is just making sure that you get your corners that you don't miss them. Okay, so once we get down, so we're going through this corner and we wanna go through this corner over here. And now I'm also going to go back through this corner and getting the corner of the next as we sort of turn this corner and keep going. So now I'm going to go through this corner as well as this corner and then I'm just going to continue working around. Okay, so once you have worked all the way to the end, we're just going to fasten off and then you can kind of decide about knotting some of these if you prefer to do that rather than weaving in all of those tails but make sure you're happy with everything before you knot and weave anything in it's just easier to pull it back if you've made any errors before you do all that
So I'm just gonna leave all those tails for now and put it back so our right sides are out. So you can kind of see how we've got our little stocking shape. You can kind of just finger block it. You can always do some steam blocking if you need to. And then what we can do is do a cuff. So you could get creative with this. You could use some fur yarn if you prefer. Um, really whatever you want to kind of dress it up. I'm just gonna continue to work with the same yarn and I'm going to do a fold over ribbed band for mine. So I'm going to the back center here for joining. Put a slip knot on your hook. And I'm going to join into the corner. So I'm going to have a single crochet in the corner and I'm going to single crochet for each stitch as well. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 and the next corner is 11. Okay, so you have your nine stitches for your clusters and then a corner and a corner. So that's how many stitches you'll have across each square around. Okay, so we're just gonna come over to the next corner. Okay, and just make sure you don't miss that first stitch here. Okay, so I'm gonna work that around. Okay, so you should have 44 stitches. We're going to slip stitch into our first stitch to join, and then we're going to chain out to do a join as you go ribbed cuff. If you feel like your stitches are gonna to be too tight, if you're a really tight crochet, you may wanna go up a hook size so that your band isn't too tight. But I'm gonna to continue to work with the 5.5. I'll start by chaining a total of 29. And then I'm going to work back down so that I have a total of 28 single crochet stitches. Okay, so I've worked all the way down. Now, as you can see where I slip stitched into the first stitch, you can see here that it's slip stitched into. So this row accounts for this stitch. So we're going to skip it now and slip stitch into the next two. And then we need to crochet two rows to account for those two slip stitches. I'm going to turn my work we're going to skip the two slip stitches that we just made and work a single crochet in the back loops only. Okay, so I'm going to work all the way across. It's a good idea to count to make sure you stay on track with your stitches. Okay, and so I've worked across. I'm going to chain one and turn. We're going to single crochet in the back loop only. Back down the cuff. So this will be repeated throughout. We're just going to be working rows just like this, working single crochets in the back loop only. Okay, so I've worked all the way down. You can kind of get an idea now at your cuff here. So mine goes a little bit past, which is good. So we don't want it necessarily too long, but not too short either. So this has worked out well. And now what we're going to do is slip stitch into the next two 
Okay, so let's look at this again. You can tell this stitch has been slip stitched into. These stitches here have not. So we're going to slip stitch into the next two. And then we'll work two more rows for those slip stitches. So we turn this way. We skip over those two slip stitches and work single crochets in the back loop only. You're just going to repeat this all the way around. So we had 44 stitches worked around the top of the stocking. We need 44 rows for our cuff. Okay, so I'm gonna work up my rows off camera. This is a good project to sit and watch TV. Just relax, it's nice and repetitive. And then when I have that complete, I'm going to show you how we can join it up. Do a slip stitch join. We can add a tag to hang our stocking. You could add some pom-poms, some embellishments, tassels. I haven't decided yet what sort of embellishment I think I'm gonna add. I may do tassels for this one with some beads, but it's really like whatever, you don't even need to add those extra embellishments, so it's really up to you. Okay, so once you work all the way around, you're going to be ending up at the top. I'm going to chain one. And now we'll want to slip stitch the band together. So I'm going to go through the back loop and then over to the chain and slip stitch. Okay, so work that all the way down the stocking. Just don't slip stitch them too tight you don't want to distort the edge at all. So just keep it nice and loose and work that slip stitch all the way down. Now, once you've worked all the way down, we're gonna just fasten this off and you can weave in this tail. As you can see looking at this this does still pull in a little bit more than the stocking if you wanted to go up a hook size on this cuff it would just make it a little bit bigger which would be fine you can see how this is going to look you can give it a little stretch so it ends up not looking too tight once you fold it over and this has ended up being a really cute little stocking so next we can add some embellishments. You can use pom-pom makers to make pom-poms to hang them just to give your stocking that little extra special touch. Of course, it's all optional. There's different name options. You could put a personalized name on your stocking. You could hang a little nameplate. There's lots of different options. You can get little wooden ones where you can just write your name. You could get chalkboard. You can have custom wooden names made, lots and lots of different options to personalize stocking. This would be really cute just to add a leather, like the leather names that I like to add on my hats. Lots of different ways that you can personalize them and make them special. For the tassels, you'll wanna cut approximately 30 strands of yarn, about 14 to 16 inches in length. So I've tied a piece of twine 20 inches in length and just knotted that through the center. So you could use yarn for this step. It's really up to you. And I have knotted it here in the center. And now I'm going to take an additional strand of yarn. So I cut another one about 14 inches and you can do as many tassel balls here now as you want. I'm gonna just go with one. Maybe I'll do two, I'll just wait and see. Okay, so what you're gonna do is, I like to go once and then twice again, just to help secure that. Okay. 
and then just give it a knot. So then you can take your tails. This one's falling down nicely in with the other tassels, but I'm gonna take this one. Okay, and now if you wanted, and see this could even be thicker. You could even do th more than 30 strands of yarn and it would look great. Maybe for the bigger stockings, you may wanna do the tassel a bit bigger. So if you want to do an additional tassel ball, you're just going to do the same thing. And you can really make this, if you wanted to make it longer, you could add as many balls as you want. And you can always wrap this yarn around if you wanted to as well, or you can just leave it like this. So again, one of the strands will fall down nicely, and then you can take your other strand and just pop it down, tuck it down through. Okay, and then what you wanna do is trim your tails. Just make them all even, and you could also even give them a steam if you're finding they're a bit crinkly, which depending, Sometimes when you're pulling those strands from the center of the ball, they can be a little bit wavy. Okay, and also you could add some beads if you want just to dress it up even more. Add some wooden beads. Really, again, this is sort of your own preference, how you wanna embellish your stockings. And depending on the colors you use, like you could mix and match your stockings like with different colored tassels. You can just get creative. Push that down, you could add as many beads as you want. I think that looks nice for the small stocking. So you can just add that in and look at how sweet that looks. So what I would do at this point now, depending on where you want your tassel, if you want it here, or if you want it at the front, you can just decide where you prefer the location of your tassel. And then just use your yarn needle tie it in a bow, you can knot it, really however you want. These are just some ideas to finish off that stocking. So to finish off my stockings, I've added these nice wooden name tags that I got from Etsy and I'll have those linked in the description box. And also here are the stocking tags that you can purchase from We Crochet. And these can be sewn directly where you want to hang the stocking. So I would put them 
here and just use a yarn needle and thread to sew these to the stocking. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day.